The New Marketing Show is brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media solves business problems through effective digital marketing. TrinityWebMedia.com. Cool. It's on. It's on. It's on. I, I hit record this time. Not like last time. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the New Marketing Show brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Today, I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Kevin Everly. Hey, Kevin. How are you? Good, Greg. How you doing today? Fantastic. Hey, before we jump into the show, I just wanted to extend an offer out to our listeners that, you know, if you're ever in doubt as to where you are with your marketing progress, or if you're on the right track, go to trinitywebmedia.com slash assessment. That's slash assessment. And you can take an assessment that we created so that you can kind of grade your own marketing efforts so you can see where you are what you need to do and you know how to do it you know we we actually give you instructions actionable instructions and detailed instructions on how to take care of yourself uh and if it's too much for you of course you can contact us and we'll give you a consultation okay and remember that is trinitywebmedia.com slash assessment kev how are you what is going on today uh, doing well doing well good day in the office it's warming up in new jersey feels like spring i saw a couple bees my world is pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting. <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess what it is when you do turn the corner between winter to spring and you start to see the insects, it, it is, you know, it does kind of signify it's getting warmer and nice weather is around the corner. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, today I thought that we would, we would talk about some aspects of teamwork and a mantra that you and I really believe in that I've, I've learned early on in my career from uh, the fine folks at Gangplank in Chandler, Arizona. I want to talk today about collaboration over competition and what that means to you and how we can apply it to uh, our teamwork and how our clients can apply it to their own workflow. Fantastic. So this is always something that you and I, yeah, this is a topic you and I have discussed for years. And it goes back to, you know, I, I think that's who we are as marketers and individuals, the collaborative and, you know, that creative streak. But, you know, I really saw collaboration over competition, you know, in action firsthand when, you know, working with you at Gangplank the few times I made it out. And that was the coolest thing about that whole environment to me was you've got a bunch of experts who do, you know, they've got their own specialties and, you know, but everybody helps each other when needed. And the camaraderie that, you know, that the camaraderie and the outcome of the projects that you guys are all working on as a result, you know, really was impressive. I'm grateful to Derek Neighbors and Jade Mesco, founders of Gang Plan, and also all the other great people that I met along the way, like Chris Lee, who we had on the show last week. Yeah. Uh, other, other people, you know, I make mention of, you know, Joshua Ziering, Chuck Reynolds, Jonathan Crisotti, Chris Connery, Scott Yako, all those guys who essentially always do did professionally what I did, but we always did it differently or we catered to different markets. And the amount of knowledge shared and wisdom shared between the teams is incredible that when you start, you know, brainstorming and working as a team, how much smarter you really are collectively versus, you know, individually. So, I mean, I thought that that would be a great topic. And you know, I love the teamwork aspect of it. You know, nothing brings a team together, in my mind, like a collaboration. What do you think? Absolutely. And I mean, from the projects I've personally worked on and that we're heavily, you know, that we heavily collaborated on as a team, it, the result always spoke for itself. A team member throwing out the seed of an idea and kind of germinating that idea together as a team and, you know, taking it up one notch here with social, with Tammy's expertise or, Hey, on the website to support this, you know, let's develop this out. And, you know, the whole team kind of rallies around a cause and can get excited about it. I mean, the product is always, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, I was just reading an old blog post as I was getting ready for the show and a friend of mine, Katie Hurst, uh, wrote it and she wrote it when she was employed by Gangplank and she, you know, she, she made three points. You know, here, here they are. It's not business. It's, per, it's not personal. It's business. It's a dog eat dog world. And we work directly with competitors. Now, which one is not like the other? <laughs> yeah. So in my mind, and call me crazy, you know, whatever, competition sometimes is, is perceived. Okay. Right? 
Because what because we do the same exact we work in the same industry. Let's say you know we're a WordPress development company or you know a content marketing company. Does that mean that we shouldn't have a round table and we shouldn't work side by side with other people that we can trust to collaborate with? Now, I want to say trust because there's trust on many different mm-hmm. levels here, right? A good collaboration has a lot of trust. Like one, if we're going to collaborate with people who do exactly what we do, you got to trust that they're not going to steal your mm-hmm. client. And you, in a place like Gangplank and in my previous situations, I never had, I never even thought that that would ever become an issue. The other thing is that you have to trust the other team members that when, because of collaboration, you can be a little sure. vulnerable, right? I think the, the best ideas sometimes are the half baked ideas that you throw out to the world and you let the world tell you what to do with it, you know? And it's the same thing in a collaborative team. There has to be a trust thing there that's gonna, going to help with the vulnerability that when you throw out an idea or you throw out a thing, you know, you're not laughed at or, you know, you're not heckled out of the room, you know. Um, and if they're going to talk shit, hopefully they'll talk shit to your face. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is always the case in, in, in art. Like all good friends should. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happens. You know, you become friends and you build relationships over time. And what happened to me is I consider – a lot of people that I collaborated with early on are some of my best friends. It certainly takes a certain rapport and level of trust to effectively collaborate, whether it's with a team, you know, internally or externally with, you know, people who are working in the same vertical or industry. Yeah. And, and like we can extend it even further, like that's collaborating with, you know, the perceived competition and people that you think, you know, do the, you know, exactly the same thing for you. And I, I, I want to throw this out there too, as a business thing. I've gotten the best leads in business from people who do exactly sure. the same stuff that I do. Sure. You know, they may be too busy. They may be, uh, the client may not be a right fit, either vertical, vertical, technically, or, sure. you know, personality wise, sure. you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you sometimes you, you, you're not a fit for everybody. And if you think you're a fit for everybody, you're really fooling yourself. But, Collaboration also goes another way. There's, there's external collaboration that we're talking about. There's internal collaboration. Like our team, I'll, you know, I'll devise a social media strategy, hand it off to Tammy, Tammy Harvey, our social media director, and she can go ahead and put her spin on it. And then, you know, it comes to you eventually down the line as, you know, it, being like, you know, more of the operations of client services type of thing. And we all have our own input on it. And it's a collaborative process. You know, I think that, that companies, and, and I've been in this situation before, companies and people and professionals are doomed when they think they know everything. I agree. When they, they think that they're the only resource that they have, then things start to fall apart. And I've experienced that, you know, myself. Ego gets in the way and you don't want to ask for help or, you know, this or that. But definitely <clears throat> there's that type of collaboration, you know, an internal collaboration. The other type of collaboration that, I think that I've always tried to get and I've always tried to uh, strive for and achieve sure. is collaboration with our clients. Sure. You know, I think that our process is highly collaborative. And when you employ a collaborative process and you let other people take ownership in what you're doing, oh my gosh, it's it, sure. the, the work speaks for itself. But also I think that the process and the stake, the stakes change. When somebody else feels ownership in what you're doing. Now, look, I'm also a firm believer. You don't step on people's toes and you stay in your own lane. But at the same time, like when you collaborate, you bring your own expertise and your own experiences into what you're doing. And the results are, you know, can be, you know, really magical. You know, and I think one of the the hardest things for teams to collaborate effectively together is, you know, everybody has their own opinion and idea. If your idea isn't the one that's going to, you know, be ran with, you can't be heard about it. You know, and you have to trust yeah. in the team and say, hey, this yeah. may not work because of X, Y, Z. But, you know, I mean, as marketers, you and I have to ditch 100 great ideas a day. And let's be honest, they're really not that good. <laughs> we think they are. But, you know. Or if we're, or if we're not going to ditch them, yeah. we, we put them in, in our pocket or we put them in, sure. you know, we've got Evernote or something like that. We keep a running track of it. And we can, we have a playbook for the future also. 
Exactly. So, you know, it's no hard feelings of, hey, maybe maybe my opinion is not going to work today. Hey, Greg, let's run with your idea. That doesn't mean I'm going to shut down your idea. Yeah, I've got to jump in and immediately, you know, let's let's sculpt your idea to the best possible version of it. How do you work towards that, you know, in your mind? Like, how do you end up working towards that? How do you end up putting away ego and all – because I think it's ego that, that gets in the way of that shit. I agree. But I, how do you put that away? How do you, how do you handle that is my question. <sighs> That's a great question. And that's, you know, I, I really feel like it's going to depend on the situation and the personalities involved because it, as soon as ego, you know, as soon as we deal with ego, I think it really comes down to personality, you know, that's attached to that ego. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to think that we work with, you know, enough professionals that they understand that, you know, Hey, we're not running with your idea, but your input is still valuable to every, everyone else. You know, I really think it has to do with the, the culture in an organization and the, you know, tolerance of diversified thought. Yeah, I, I, you know, that, that's a great point. I think that there are some things where, you know, you can look at, you know, or maybe a baseball analogy. You know, you get up to plate, not everybody hit, not everybody, ha- you know, gets a hit mm-hmm. every app with every swing. <clears throat> but when their turn comes around in the lineup, they still get a chance up at bat. So, I mean, it's just because an idea you, – and, and it all comes down to having the right team. If Just because your idea isn't used you know, or your, 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 you know, your thoughts aren't put into play, all of that stuff, you know, I think that it doesn't mean that you're any less than. It, it means that, you know what, it just isn't the time. And, like, a lot of times there isn't bad ideas. There's just bad timing mm-hmm. for that idea. That's like a John Coltrane sure, quote. Sure. Like Coltrane, you know, I love jazz music and jazz as much as possible. And Coltrane said, "There's no, there's no wrong notes. There's just a wrong time for that note." So going back to the question you just asked me, I'm going to revisit your analogy and take it one step further, right? Even though you know you don't you don't make a hit, you get another at bat in an inning or two or whatever. Even if you don't make a hit, then your team wins. You're still part of that W, right? Yeah, and you know, that's a you know that's. That is a fantastic point, Kevin. You know, it's when you put away ego, you're working for, you know, especially, you know, in, in sports or uh, music or, you know, pr- in marketing, anything like that. You know, what, anywhere where strong personalities, you know, exist. Yeah, sure. when, whenever, you, when you, whenever you happen to do that, what happens is, you, you know, it, it, it's not about you. It's about the greater good of the team. In, in our situation, it's about the greater good of the client. Is it moving the client down the road towards their goals or is it detracting from that? Yeah. I mean, and that's the question, you know, we ask ourselves at every phase of working on a project for a client, you know, whether it's strategy or, you know, key drilling down who's their target audience. You know, everything is to advance the cause and bring them closer to achieving goals. And I, I think that is one of the main things that collaboration can do. Yeah, I, you know, so I, I, this takes me back. This actually takes me back. I just had like sort of a flashback and I, 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 I you know, I, I just thought to myself, like, God damn it, if more agencies that I worked for understood this, I wouldn't have gotten fired so many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I, just because, you know, it, it's all for the client's greater good, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, Mike Sparaco, you're still a dick. <laughs> What, what it is, it's like, you, it's all for the greater good. So it's like, it, if the revenue isn't, you know, if, if, if the proper recommendation may yield less revenue for the company, but it's the right thing for the client, it's a no-brainer. There's no question to be asked. Yeah, there's, there's no questions, you know, it, it's, it's the right thing to do. If you are asking questions, it's time to begin asking questions about the integrity of, you know, your organization and why you exist, you know? Yeah, and I, and I, uh, I go back again to Mike Sparocco, you are a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's another talk show. <clears throat> but the thing is that, you know, just because, like, you and I are partners in this company, it doesn't mean that anybody else, you know, when you go into a collaborative workspace or a collaborative mindset, everybody is equal. Everybody's ideas yes. are paid attention to, you know, from, you know, you know, you and then me and, you know, like Tammy or Nate or Scott, you know, all of our team, everybody's idea is just as valuable. And I think that, yeah. you know, as effective leaders, you know, if, if you don't look towards collaboration, you're really, really being short-sighted on how you can work well and better 
and achieve better results for your clients. I agree. I mean, like you were saying with team collaboration, everybody has an equal, equally weighted voice. You know, while that's certainly the case, and you know, to bring the client closer, somebody does have to hold the reins and you know play the moderator mm-hmm. just to make sure things don't get out of hand. And you know that you know the tunnel vision that happens during collaboration. You know, so many ideas and so many debates over will this work? Won't it? You know, somebody needs to say, "Hey, well, this is the goal. Are we there?" True, absolutely, and also you have to respect somebody who has that expertise that they're bringing to the table. So uh, mm-hmm. in the past, I've collaborated with some you know, high level dev projects and we've had to do some high level SEO stuff. And when Chuck, well, Chuck Reynolds was on the team, he's the SEO expert. You have to defer to him a little bit more in that situation than somebody else like myself as a content creator and can write code for mm-hmm. WordPress. You know, everybody has their, everybody plays a part. And mm-hmm. it's when you have that respect and, and everything. And like, I, you know, partially disagree a little bit with you. He's like, I think that if you have to have a moderator in a collaborative situation, you have the wrong team. You've got the wrong people at the table. You have the wrong people at the table. Correct. I mean, you can, you know, I, that's a great point. And normal, you know, normally I, you know, I, I agree a hundred percent. You're right. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while I do make good points. <laughs> Put one on a score. Sure. <laughs> one on a score. Or- <laughs> so use it Zen again, again we use Zencast to record the to record the show and it's awesome that they have some sound effects built in. So I won't I won't taint the message with my uh with my amusement. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Just as needed. Yeah. So collaboration over competition. I mean, it's such a foreign concept to so many people. And I mean, so we've talked about the collaboration. Let's look at the competition. What does that competition do to an organization, whether internally or externally, when that's present? Oh, man. You know what it does? It it strengthens your organization. And what it does is any of the competition that, you know, aren't in a collaborative mindset, I think that they're at a disadvantage. Sure. You know, like people like, you know, you and I, people like you and I, like, you know, our company, we have... You, you know, you, I do the strategy and WordPress development. You do the operations and the client management. Tammy does the social. Scott's our content creator. Nate's a developer. <clears throat> but if we needed somebody who is an expert in, let's say, PPC ad- advertising, mm-hmm. is it worth it for us as a company to benefit our client by going outside and actually bringing somebody else in, or should we try to learn that skill and and make the client suffer through? You and I talk about this, and the clients aren't allowed to be our guinea pigs. You know that's why we have our own company. Our own company is the guinea pig. <laughs> and, and you know what? That, that's great. And the first thing that we collaborate on is we collaborate with one another on our own stuff. Like you know, there's no there's no marketing, and there's no pro- you know. The problems that you and I and, and our company faces in business are no different than, a co- than, the, than the problems that our clients face. Everything that we put in play for us to solve that problem, we can actually stay with some authority and some you know, a, a, assuredness saying, hey, this is what we did when we experienced this problem. Now what we're doing is we're being empathetic. We're understanding what their, their problem we're also going back to saying, this is a solution that's tried and true. This is something that works, you know? And then when we re- re- relate it and tell the story about ourselves, it, be- it hits home a little bit more. And, sure. you know, and I think that collaboration is key. Now, I do have one stipulation when it comes to collaboration. Okay. If you're going outside of your organization to pull somebody in that's an expert, I think it's always the wise move to be transparent and let your client know. Sure. Because what you handle, you know, what, what you handle today is something you're going to probably handle on and on and on for a client that you do a lot of work with. So, you know, I don't want to ever play a game, a smoke and mirror game, make us bigger than what we are. We're a five person organization. We're bigger than most people that play in our small to mid range business space. But at the same time, like, there's nothing to matter with saying, you know what, we coll- we have a collaborative partner that we work with for XYZ. Yeah, graphic design's one example. 
Yeah, graphic design, you know, PPC, you know, SEM type of stuff. So, oh, oh everything that aligns with our industry that we don't quite do. You know, we're not experts in. We don't want to. You know, we're not risking our reputation on you know the jack of all trade mentality. Yeah, and I hate. I absolutely, I absolutely hate the Me Too business model. And the, you know, the Me Too business model is. Oh, we need somebody to do that. Well, we do that. Yeah. Oh, well, we need somebody to do this. Oh, we do that too. I need somebody to wash my car and detail my car on Thursday. So, well, we do that too. What the fuck? What? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's so absurd. And I think that a lot of small businesses, especially, you know, small marketing companies fall into that. You know, there's a, there's a lot of other businesses that fall into that, like a client of ours, Cup of Cabana, right? They are a mobile espresso and coffee catering company. They do events and private events, right? They don't serve hamburgers, hot dogs, they do what they do and they do extremely well. So, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where they find a collaborative partner if, should they need somebody for other stuff. I want donuts. It's so funny you said that. I just got a text before we recorded the show that somebody else wanted donuts <laughs> for the office today. <laughs> Uncanny that you just said that. Or maybe uh, I'm going to call Marianne whatever. and get a recommendation. See, yeah. see who her specialist is. But I think that, you know, the sooner you can kind of embrace this collaboration over competition, the stronger your business is. The stronger your business is, the stronger your, your business community is. And the more opportunity, the opportunity, the bigger opportunities um, or the more opportunity you'll have to work on some real interesting projects as the hired gun expert in that thing. I mean, I agree. And I also feel just the overall health of being a collaborative organization over a competitive one takes out a lot of really negative yeah. emotion that that competition, you know. Okay. You, to say, me, that, okay. you say it takes away the negative emotion. I'm going to say it strips away the bullshit. There you go. You know, to me, competition is fear, ego. I'm better than you. You know, uh, doggy dog. It's going to be very hard, you know, for you to advance your own and your client's cause with that mentality. It's revolutionary. I mean, I, I never heard of any of this stuff until, you know, I never heard of any of this until I stepped foot in Gangplank in 2009. But it's something that I, it's a principle I've been working with my whole career, which doesn't always fit into the marketing and advertising agency. So, you know, when you do start to embrace that, you get shown the door, <laughs> which <laughs> happened to me. Happened to me, and that's a whole nother talk show. So, <laughs> so I, I, I want to I wanna end this show with, let's do a, a rapid fire five questions. And you didn't know this, but I'm going to ask you the five questions. Fantastic. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? <laughs> One, what's your favorite small business tool to run a business? It doesn't have to be, mar it doesn't have to be marketing related. Small business tool. Or just, or just what's, a, what's your favorite business tool that you use to run Trinity? How about Slack? I, I love Slack. I love the fact that we can all stay you know, in contact. I might ask you a question about a project. The transparency is there for the whole team to see it, although our whole team may not be working on it. They understand what we are. If they see something and there's an idea, they know that, hey, guys, put your hand up, reach out, and let, let's collaborate. Yeah, and, and, and exactly. I mean, that's a highly collaborative tool. Using yes. Slack is collaborative. I mean, even if it's passive collaboration, where we can be in there and you and I may have a conversation about a, a development or a, a problem that a client's having, and somebody else, like let's say Nate, one, our developer, chimes in because it's in a public, public forum, that's a form of collaboration. So that's, that's a great answer. All right, hot dog or hamburger? Hamburger. Really? Yeah, oh, always, awesome. man. I'm such a hot dog guy. It's crazy. You know what's funny? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a little story. I must have been five years old. I bit a hot dog at a barbecue, and there was like a piece of dirt or grit. It took me another 25 years to eat another hot dog. Oh, Jesus Christ. So you, okay, so you really don't like hot dogs. All right. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. What's your favorite thing to do outside of work? Hanging out with the dogs in the winter for sure. Gardening and you know yard work in the summer. We live next to the Delaware River, so kayaking and fishing. Right. Okay. I guess one more and then, then the big one. What's a better place to live, New Jersey or San Diego? Oh, I'm quite content in New Jersey, but I, <laughs> I have a feeling anybody with the right mind listening <laughs> might have a different opinion. <laughs> awesome. And then the last one is, and this is a two-part question, what's, what's your uh, 
What's your favorite part about running a marketing agency? And like, what, what do you really, what are you really passionate about with the business? Affecting change for our clients, being able to, you know, as a problem solving agency, you know, somebody has a problem, they, they feel it, they're hurting, you know, and us being able to help them do that. And, you know, with our mission and team and all that, that's, that's really what, you know, makes me excited to get up every morning and do it all over again. Yeah. And you know, I'm like that too. And, and I, I absolutely love this topic collaboration over competition. Cause I, I always view myself as a super collaborative person, whether it's playing music or playing sports or running a business or working with clients or developing strategies, or sometimes even just raising hell. I mean, you, you just need a good partner to do so. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the second part of the question is who should be interviewed next for our show? So I heard Susan Byers coming up, excited about that. I'd love to, uh, you know, maybe Josh Deering, get a little San Francisco in the mix. Oh, boy. Okay, we're asking, okay, you know, for a 30 to 45-minute show, we might have to extend it to an hour, hour and a half, because Josh is a great storyteller, and I don't, I, and well, if he gets on a roll, it's going to be awesome. So, hey, Deering, after, uh, well, we're going to come for you, and we're going to get you on it. And Josh is the founder of kittyhawk.io. All right, Kevin, until next time. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. And again, if you want to see where your marketing plays out and where you are, go to trinitywebmedia.com slash assessment and keep those reviews coming on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podbean, and all that stuff. Kev, I will talk to you later. Greg, have a good night. All right, bye. Bye.